look at how to determine the molecular formula. The molecular formula is always some whole number multiple of the empirical formula. Um, so if I know the empirical formula, I could always multiply the subscripts by some integer, some whole number, and I would get the molecular formula. For instance, glucose, which has a uh, molecular formula C6H12O6, okay, the empirical formula of that is CH2. And if I multiply all of these subscripts by 6, it would lead me to the molecular formula. This is true of all molecular formulas. There is some integer that I can multiply the empirical formula by to get me the molecular formula. Even if that integer was 1, then the empirical and molecular formula would be the same. But if I could figure out what this integer is, then I could figure out what the molecular formula is if I'm given the empirical one. Okay. So if I can find this multiple, then I can always find the molecular formula if given the empirical. Now, this, sub, this, this multiple is not only true of the subscripts, it's actually also true of the masses. The molar mass of CH2O, if I were to multiply it by 6, I would get the molar mass of the molecular formula of glucose. Um, so I want to take a look at an example, and we'll do it step by step out with an example so you can see how to do this process. So I take a moment, read the problem. Compound has an empirical formula. Here's the empirical formula. Notice it's the simplest whole number ratio. And I give you the molar mass of the compound. So this is the molar mass not of the empirical formula. This is the molar mass of the molecular formula, which is not given. And they want to know what is the molecular formula. So your first step is, with your empirical formula, figure out what the molar mass is of this empirical formula. Okay, there's um, one carbon, which weighs, has an atomic mass of 12, two hydrogens, each have an atomic mass of 1, and a chlorine, which has an atomic mass of 35.5. So the molar mass, or the mass of one mole of this empirical formula, would be 49.5 grams per mole. Notice that the molar mass of the compound is 99 grams per mole. It's not the same as that of the empirical formula, so the molecular formula is different than that of the empirical. So how can I figure out what the molecular formula is? Or how can I figure out what integer I have to multiply the subscripts by of the empirical formula to get the molecular? Well, I can just figure that out by seeing what's the ratio of the molar mass of the molecular to the molar mass of the empirical. So all I can do to find n is divide the molecular weight that's given in the problem or the molar mass that's given in the problem statement divided by the molar mass I just found. So if I do the 99 grams per mole, that's the unknown molecular formula, divided by the 49.5, that's the empirical formula's molar mass, I see that I get a whole number. Two, if you were to divide these numbers and you were to get like 1.99 or something like that, I would round to two. But you should at this point get a whole number. This is the whole number that I have to multiply my subscripts by. So if my empirical formula is CH2Cl, if I take those subscripts, the 1, the 2, the 1, and I multiply them all by that integer 2, then I get my molecular formula, C2H4Cl2. So this is actually a really simple problem. So if you look back to this step by step, all I'm doing is I'm getting the molar mass of the empirical formula, and then I'm taking the molar mass of the one given in the problem and dividing by this number to give me some type of integer, some type of whole number, and then I'm just multiplying my subscripts by that number to get the molecular formula. Very simple process. Take a moment and try this example, then check your work. Okay, here's my empirical formula. Let's get the molar mass. I get 14. There's one carbon that weighs 12, two hydrogens that each weigh one, and to get 14 grams per mole. Now I can take the molar mass that's given in the problem, 56 grams per mole, and divide by 14 grams per mole, the molar mass of the empirical formula, and I get a whole number of four. This is telling me that the empirical, the molecular formula is four times that of the empirical. So that would not only be true of the molar masses, that would be true of the subscripts. This is the number I multiply my subscripts by. So 1 and 2 turn into 4 and 8. There's my empirical formula. Uh, my, there's my molecular formula.